Hey, it's Pete Scardabello. We're gonna this week. We're gonna do something different. I'm gonna build a template from scratch. But you'll notice I'm using Cubase. So the reason why is I'm trying to migrate over to Cubase from Logic. Not for everything, but for certain things. So I thought it'd be good to take you along as I build my template from scratch. I'm doing a trailer type template. So there's going to be a lot of big, big stuff here. This week I want to try to make three or four trailer tracks for my portfolio. So I thought I'd show you how I did that. And actually, I have the week off from teaching. So we're going to do a piece every one of the four days. So four pieces in four days. So it should be exciting and challenging. And what I'm going to do is write a piano sketch in the morning. And then after that, we're going to just do the piece in real time. So hopefully it won't take more than one or two hours, but it might take longer. <laughs> but so I might probably edit the videos a little bit. But I'm definitely going to be doing it in real time. So let's get started with uh, showing you the what I have so far on the template. There's a couple things I want to talk about before I get into this. The subgroups in this template are going to be trailer hits and effects, which is here. Epic percussion, choir, brass, strings, and winds. And there might be some other stuff I add to it after, but we're going to stick with those basic groups for now. And we're going to talk about bussing those into the separate groups. And also my reverb setup. And another thing I want to mention is I know a lot of people are going to wonder why I do it this way, but I'm going to actually create, I create, and I do this in logic too, separate contact tracks, um, uh, one instance for one instrument, which a lot of people don't do it that way, but a lot of people also do it that way. So. I like to, the reason why I do it that way is I like to work with audio tracks and not MIDI tracks. So I'm just more comfortable doing that, especially when it comes to throwing some plugins in there and, and whatnot. So that's why I do it that way. And another, another reason is if while I'm writing the piece, say I want two of these tracks or, you know, I have spiccato and I want two of these, it's a lot easier to just hit command D and create a copy of that track. So on the fly, it's easier to change your setup. So that's one of the reasons, oops, why I do it that way. So this should be interesting because I'm trying to get used to Cubase too. So hopefully it won't be too painful for the people who already use Cubase. Let me show you what I have. We'll get started with this. What I have in my trailer effects folder here. Oh, another thing I like about Cubase is this saves a lot of RAM. Say I'm not using certain things in a piece. What I do is Option D, and it totally disables this. It takes the contact out of RAM for that instrument. And then I just Option D it again to bring it back in. So that's a great feature, and that's one of the reasons why I'm switching over to Cubase possibly, because that's a real RAM saver. I have a lot of RAM in this computer. I have about 48 gigs, which isn't really that much, but still when you get into the 100 to 200 range of tracks, it's, it's a really cool feature if you're not using that. And even disabling it while you have stuff in there is good. So I just wanted to mention that. So anyway, let's get to the template here, trailer effects. So I have some Ava Instinct uh, trailer effects here. So all kind of big stuff and that's some booms here. This is cinematic trailer design stuff, all right? And then it's uh, some drops here, drum hits, heavy transitions. So I'm not going to use all of these, but have them in there. 
sci-fi and explosions. This is scenes from the multiverse. Booms. You can find where I put them. Yeah, right there. Brams. Downers. Reverses. Uh, risers. This is Juggernaut bass. I like this for subs and stuff. And you, you, there's a lot of. Uh, I'll show you that. You can go through a lot of different sounds here. But I mostly like it for that sub there. Some the drums. These are very electronic sounding, but that's good sometimes to layer in with the epic drums. Guitar, cinematic guitars, some transitions. And this is just one of them. I, I have it set up so I can scroll through. Oops. Have it set up so I can scroll through the ones I want. So I'm not going to, I don't load all of them in there. Evil reverses. Hybrid tools two. Which is eight DO. Hits. Hits two. Whooshes, everybody. You need those when you do trailer tracks. Uh these are more hits. Let me open this up so you can see that. So all that kind of stuff. Oh, these Tyco rolls are cool. And those are short and then there's longer ones. So these are all like trailery stuff. High, these uh, gravity hits, the heaviosity. Impacts. Subs. So all that kind of stuff. Damage. Good old damage. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the trailer effects. And the other day I started doing strings. So, so far I was working on the shorts. So these are all the shorts strings I'm going to use. So. This is the Met Metropolis Arc 1, the low octaves. Right? And also, these are the high spiccato. There's also the, these, I like these a lot. These are the octave spiccatos. It's always useful when they record the octaves. It's much more realistic than actually if I were to do octaves on here. So if you can get samples that have the octaves actually recorded, that's, that's always nice. But I also put, I use the CSS a lot, so I put these spiccatos as well. The cinematic studio strings. So, yeah. So I might layer those, I don't know yet. Second violin. Viola. Uh, the cello. And the bass. So that's it for the shorts. And what I'm going to do is actually create a folder for the shorts here. Okay, <clears throat> so string shorts. Before we get back to strings, I wanted to do epic percussion. 
So let's do that. So this is kind of what composers do in their spare time. Make a template sketches. So for epic percussion, had some start with some damage stuff. So I know at this point damage is kind of an older library, but I still like it for a couple things. The Armageddon stuff. Right? Damage. Armageddon. Hits. So I like it for that, and I like it for the plastics, studio plastics. So these are this is a great layer for like top end kind of stuff. Not as epic, but sort of good for faster percussion patterns. So, and sometimes I'll layer that. Know, that kind of stuff okay moving on my notes here metropolis arc there's a couple things in there that I like uh, epic percussion and the epic hits so yeah the, the basically these two Oops. so some nice tycos there That's in there. Okay, then the other one is the the hits one. So this has some cool trailery kind of hits. Big hits. Okay, next in line is the H H Z stuff. The Hans Zimmer uh, Spitfire Library. So I got a lot in here. I, I like the Tycos in here a lot. Start with the high Tyco. Also, I, I want to um, make sure these are set to... Just so you have enough headroom. Don't put everything at zero. So I go like there. But another thing is, let's check out the mic position. This is a little pretty roomy here. And that's fine, but I like to put a little close mic in here. So I put like maybe that much. Hear the difference? So you get more of that attack in there. This is the low, I think. Let's get the low in there. So check you check the mic position on these. So let's hear the close mic. See that's a little has a weird mid tone, so I would, So I don't you know, don't put that much in there, but I think that's okay like that. Once again, bring it down. Actually, let me check these hits to make sure. Check these. Uh, yeah, see, these are kind of higher. Let's keep it down. Because it can get out of control pretty quickly with these kind of tracks. If you have everything at zero. So give yourself some headroom. Oh, here's the ensemble. Let's listen to the close mic. That's nice. So I might keep more of that and only 
cut it a little bit here. Kind of like it all the way up. So keep that attack. Oh, that's good. See, it's pretty hot there. See that? So go a little more. The last one I use is the large Daiko. Yeah. Oh, let's check out the close mic. Nice. By the way, I'm using Hans Zimmer, his own mixes here. So I like, I like his mixes. They're pretty aggressive, of course. So that's good. Take it down. Nice rolls there and stuff. Rims. Okay, moving on. Okay, here's something I like. It's the uh, the timpani with the hot rods, which, if you know uh, percussionists, you're, it's the they're like little wooden dowels that are wrapped. So it gives a different attack than a stick, or it's sort of between a stick and a brush. But I like using these for more active rhythms. And they have a pitch, which is cool, so you can sort of, you know, it serves two purposes here. Let me show you. I mean, I may also bring timpani in for this track, but for now I'm not, not using it. But I may. I mean, you know, the regular sort of uh, idiomatic way of playing it. So check this out. But you have to sort of tweak the mics and the the uh eq a little so i'll show you that put the close mic on so what you want to do keep it pretty present here well, what i do is you see where it says a uh, crack here i mess with that yeah, because I want I want more of the attack and not so much of the pitch or bass of the timpani. So I go like here. See, it has cool overtones. So it's about midway with this. I'm gonna keep it close up actually. So that's nice, nice to lay it, like to overlay with everything else. And it's not that loud, so I'll keep it at zero actually. Just to keep it in balance with the other stuff. Oh, the bucket and the crasher. Well, I'll show you what that is. So it's a metal bucket with a like snare. Well, no, the crasher is like a three metal plates that are together. Gives you kind of like a, a noisy kind of sound. So bucket hits. Crushers, not crushers. But anyway, check this out. So see, you can see the picture there. Those are the, the crushers. Let's listen to a close mic on this. That's cool, I like that. So we'll keep a little of that in there. Yeah, I'll probably keep all of it like that. That's fine. Take this down a little. It's gonna cut through. Bucket crush. Low hits. Low boom gallery. That's kind of far back, which is fine for certain things, but I like this one here, it's more, it's closer. Let's listen to the close mic here. So a good attack. Keep a lot of that in. Oh, your typical kind of nice boom there. 
almost like breaks up. Pretty nasty. So we'll take that down a little. Now the surdu. This is one of my favorites. Which is a South American instrument, I think. Check this out. Okay, check this out. Yeah, right? So that's the ensemble. Check out the close mic on this. Really nice, nice attack. I keep a lot of that in. Take it down. That's good. Okay, the boobam. What is that, you ask? They're kind of like octobons, so they have a long... It is sort of like a tube. So these are really good for high kind of stuff. That kind of, you know. So let's listen to close. Yeah, that's, that really cuts through. So if you need stuff to cut through up top, these are really good for that. That's already at. That's fine where that is. And finally, for the uh, HC, we have the Paper June. Let's listen to the close mic before we do anything. So hear that, that's a nice attack there. So I'll keep a little, pull that in, maybe like that. Okay. And that's it for the HC. Next, we have ETO Epic Toms. So these have kind of like a far away sound, a lot of them, but. But I like it for certain things. It's real, like big kind of toms. Then we have the ATO Epic Dole, good old Dole. They were the first company to really have a really nice dull library, but they recently updated it. So check it out. Pretty roomy, but that's, there's a lot to choose from here. Hands, stick, brush, which is cool. So for that soft kind of crescendos. They're all different lengths. Oh, we'll keep it on the master right now. So that's good. So between all this stuff here, we have a pretty good, good thing. But one more thing I want to add is, uh, Decimator drums. Let's see, hold on. So these are good for like. Nice toms and stuff. Really uh, forward sounding. Audio Imperia, I think. Yeah. But you have to watch, it's pretty loud, so make sure you bring it back. Okay. And between all these now, we should be good to go with the epic percussion. Plus, I gotta change, I like to change the color. Epic percussion on these things. So I like to use 
for strings, I like like a brown color. Or in this case, it'd be like reddish. It's not really brown, but that's fine. Carson's more red for me. Let's make this. Trailer effects, I don't even know. Maybe like purple or something. Purple. So this is good just to keep your stuff kind of organized. So we're gonna continue with the long strings. Let's start with some Metropolis arc. Start with the highs. Legato octaves. Pull this back. Okay, that's good. Met arc one high leg eight VA high sus sustains. Not the octave though, we want the unisons. That way we can do like okay. So this goes down through the viola. Oops. So the C below middle C. So that's good. Below legato octave. Like this, the basin jelly. Uh, it's pretty big. It's a good one. Okay. I also I like the Albion one, the old Albion. Same thing, the low octaves in the Albion. So I like the legacy samples. Actually, you pull it from the original. I'll be in here. Yeah, it's a good one. So with this, I like to like to bring the close mics in too. So it's a little lower in volume, so bring this to zero. and the ambient mics too. Okay. That's too much. Okay, then I like, I have some solo, I like to do some solo strings too, so I do Friedlander violin here. I get the samples off the load here. So this controls vibrato and velocity crossfade together, which I kind of like. So that's good. And also, Neguo cello. Solo cello. Pull that back a little. Okay. Because sometimes I like to layer the 
solo strings over the group, over the ensemble, gives it a little more clarity and uh, realism, I feel like. Okay, now we're going to go to the CSS strings, uh, cinematic studio strings. So for that, we're going to do all the legatos. So I like to have options with these long strings here. Okay. So they're nice and tight, it has a nice room. You can add reverb to it, but I'll keep it keep it dry actually. I mean, I'm gonna add reverb actually to everything uh, with the Valhalla um, hall. But before we do that, let's get everything in here. Let's keep it on standard. So yeah, this looks good. Load the samples. Now you can also take some of these samples out by, I think, option clicking. Yeah, so this helps save RAM if you uh, option option click to disable. I'm actually going to do that on the other one too. So see, it went down to f there's a big difference. See, 400 megabytes here, but watch when I bring everything else in. It gets to almost a quarter of a well, 770. Megabytes, so it saves a lot. Oops, I'm gonna take these out. So it's like half, really, almost. Okay. Oh. Okay. Well, next one, the bases. That's fine. Let's do that. Okay, Chelly, take out these. Oops. Last but not least, the viola. Okay, and that's it for the long strings here. So let's put them in a folder. And we say string longs. Also, this color doesn't match that. I 
gonna move this up here. So I'll keep this stuff on the bottom. Percussion. Oops. So we have the strings up top. Let's get into the brass now. We're gonna do longs first. I'm gonna use, since this is a trailer template, I'm gonna use the Metropolis Arc 1 brass and also the Cinder Brass. Let's get into this here. Nine horns legato. So let's just bring that up. Okay, so a little less volume here. Let's look, take a look at the mics for a second. All right, so we got close in the tree. That's good, I like that. So I'm not gonna mess with that. I'm just gonna keep that the way it is. But for the brass shorts, we may take a little of the tree out. So when we get to that, we'll, we'll talk about that. I'll bring this down here. Met arc one horns at nine legato. Now I don't want that many horns for for the harmonies, so we're going to do the sus with the uh, three, which is still a lot, uh, but that's fine. This has some cool crescendo and swell samples that we may end up using, but for now. We're gonna just open this sustains here. So listen to that. And that's pretty roomy, but let's look at the mics for a second here. But I don't mind that. It should be pretty roomy because the brass are often, you know, they're set back from the rest of the orchestra. So we'll keep it at that for now. Let's go to the, we're gonna to go to the trumpets now. So this is four trumpets, so this is pretty, gonna be a pretty big section. But since we're doing epic, it's gonna be okay. But you know, if you do a chord of, we're not gonna do a chord of three trumpets, but if we do, that would be 12 trumpets, so it's kind of ridiculous, but. So, you know, for two, that's eight trumpets, so. Getting into like, Mahler eight territory. So how do I feel about that? I don't know. But for now, we'll keep it in there. Okay, moving on. So see, there's no uh, legato samples for the trumpet, but that's fine. So next, all they, and all they have is bass trombones, so we're gonna pick up the slack with the uh, cinebrass samples. But I like this bass trombone here. So I'd probably, I'd only use one of these obviously. So, so that's fine, uh, three. It's still a lot. I mean, in a normal orchestra, it's usually one bass trombone. But we're going for big, so this, this is gonna be okay. Uh, samples are still loading. Finally, we're going to throw the tuba in here, which I think is also three. And yeah, we're going to, I'm going to throw the chimbasi too, which is also a three. 
I think the chimbasa, chimbasa was first used in a Verdi opera. I could be wrong, but leave a comment below and let me know. But it's a pretty, it has a um, more aggressive uh, sound than the, uh, the tuba. It's kind of between a tuba and a bass trombone, but it's got an interesting rasp to it, so... Okay, so that's it for that. Now, let's do some synth samples. And as I go along, when I start composing the pieces, I'll, I'll, I might add things in here, but I'm just trying to start with a good core ensemble here. So, you know, I'm leaving a lot out for now. Well, let's start with the horns here. A smaller ensemble for legato. So let's see what we have. Um, so this has two horns legato. And oh, also six horns legato. So let's bring that in. I think there's a 12 horn in the pro, but I like the smaller sections, like a 6. Which is pretty big, actually. The normal section is 4. So. The 2 horn one is good for if you do a... Hmm, I wonder if I should bring that in instead, since we already have the 9. position I like the Dennis Sands it's a good mix between roomy and close so we'll keep that <coughs> we just write a six here now we need some horn susses for the uh, we need something smaller than this so let's see what we got with the uh, cine samples let's go over to Pro, the solo horn for chords, because it's more, it's going to be more realistic because you have one horn per note. Okay, so I like that. All right, let's check out the trumpet situation here. I think there's a solo trumpet that I want in an ensemble legato patch. Ensemble true legato. And actually, there's a solo there, too. Let's do the solo first. That's, that's nice to have a solo one in there to give you that definition. Pull it back a little. I'm still wondering if we're going to keep this four trumpet sus here. It might be overkill. But anyway, check out this, the trumpet sustains here. But let me bring in first this ensemble legato. Put the trumpet 
so a little sus in here. Bring this down. Okay, that's good. Okay, let's go to the trombone sound. So trombone solo legato. So I like these. Okay. We have the bass trombone, so that's fine. Let me just look at one more. Let's listen to the ensemble sustains. Just for heck of it. Yeah, I think I want to use that actually, even though it's a lot of, I think it's three trombones, but it sounds bigger. Okay, so that's good for the lungs. We're going to stop here. Um, I was going to use... Actually, let's go through it. See this? I, I think I want to get rid of this. The, uh, the four trumpet sus. It's kind of ridiculous. Oops. I'm going to remove this. All right, so I think this is good for now. color we're going to use. I like this yellow for brass. So we say brass longs. Brass shorts. Let's do that. We'll start with the Metropolis Arc one. Just to match what we already have. Start with the horns. Staccato. Let's check out the mic position. So for this, I like just close in the tree. Um, but it's a little roomy, so I like to, I'm gonna cut the tree down to negative eight dB. Lower the tree mic down. Let's check that out. So I think that's better room sound like that. The spot is nice, but we'll leave it like that for now. And go down with this. Okay, so that's good. One, horn, uh, three, tough. Okay, what's next? Trumpet. It's a big group, uh, but that's fine. Stuckatissimo. Let's check out the mic positions here. Same thing with this. I'll lower the tree down to negative eight. So 
it's still roomy, but a little less. Take this down. And we're going to purge a lot of these samples at the end here, but for now it's okay. Now the trombone thing. Remember it's the bass trombone? Yeah, we'll bring that in. But then that's going to be it for the... I'm not going to do tuba or chimbasso for this. At, at least at this point. I always do that, uh, taking of Pelham 1, 2, 3, the, if you ever saw that, the original. It's a pretty cool soundtrack, but it has this riff. Alright, so, negative 8 again. That's a little too much. Okay, and then take this down. Okay, I'm not going to use the Cinebrass shorts, but I am going to use Adventure Brass. And I'll, I'll show you that. Oh, wait, what did I do here? Let's jump it. No way I didn't do that. Okay. I like these because they're fast and they're tight sounding. I'll bring the horns in first. So, yeah, we'll use this. We're gonna bring it up to zero here. Oops, oops. All right, I'm having some issues with the CPU. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, we talked about this at the beginning, control D disables the tr Oh, man. Sorry. Uh, option D, I meant. See, it, it takes it out of RAM. I'll show you this with the activity monitor. So check it out here. So if we go to memory, right? We're at the top of our memory. <laughs> I have 48 gigs available of memory and we're at 47. So, but here's what we can do. And I'll show you, watch how this changes here. It's at, what is it at now? 47. So we're pretty, so let's take a bunch of this stuff out here and I'll see if that affects. Actually, I'll take all this out here. So if we go option D. Now let's see if that, yeah, see, it took it down to 44, which isn't bad, but still not enough. So let's go to the strings, do the same thing. And the shorts. So see, now we're at 36, so it helped a lot. And then we could do the same with the brass lungs. So now they're empty. But you just hit option D again, and it brings back the same settings, so. It's a pretty cool feature. We almost have everything we need. So. So we're gonna get some reverb on that and it helps helps out a lot, but for now that's fine. Start. Trombones. Now these samples, I like them because they're really pretty tight. 
kind of dry, but that's okay. We're going to put some reverb on at the end. They're a little quieter than the other horns, but we'll make adjustments later. Let's get a couple more in here. Use the repetitions here. This has a cool solo trumpet overlay. Actually, I might crank these up. Let's see how, let's balance them with, uh, with these for a second. Okay, it's pretty close actually. We'll go down to 10. It's pretty loud, but that's okay. I like how some of those round robins are off pitch a little, but that's that's cool. That adds to the realism. Okay. Get that out of there. So I'm just trying to balance it. This samples are kind of quieter here. I mean, another thing we could do is probably actually mess with this. Hold on. I hate to go above zero with that. Yeah, what I'm going to do is turn this all the way up. The mixed. instead of, so. Mess with that. Okay, so we just use all the mix, mix mics there. It just sits better with me. button here. Good. So we're pretty good with the shorts now. We have the tuba here. Trumpet. With that trumpet, we also have these trumpets. So we should be good with that horn. That one. This one sounds a little roomy. Let's oh, I brought the spot in for that. I'm also going to bring this up a little. Okay, that's good. down at 12. That's fine because the horns are kind of set back. Maybe these are kind of loud. Let's bring this down a little. Okay, we'll, we'll work on the balances later. I'm not going to worry too much with that because we could add reverb yet. So that's going to be it for the shorts. And we can always add things in as we need them later, but that's a good starting point, I think. I'm just going to make these yellow. And put them in a folder. Brass short. Shorts. So I'll change this folder color. Okay, we need some piano in here. 
uh, I'll show you what I use for that. So I use the Olafur Arnold's Felt Grand Piano. And it has this cool uh, tape delay track. But I don't go too loud with that. Let's see what this reverb sounds like. It's pretty washy. It's obviously not that much. So that's nice. I like that reverb. And we can mess with it later, but Okay, so that's one piano. The other one is the Simcock Felt piano, also from Spitfire. Okay, and I use the Medium Dynamics one. I like the pedal down. That doesn't need much reverb, but we can, we might throw some on at the end there, but that's good for now. And finally, I use the Cine Samples Piano in Blue. This is an older piano library, but I like it. It has a warm, kind of a warm tone. So for this, um, what I like to do is I open up all the mics here. I turn off this pedal noise. For reverb, I set these to about here. So yeah, it was like this sample library. And that's it for the pianos. So what color, let's see what color we're going to make these. Something different. I'll just make them just green color for now. Let's get into the choir. Start with the Metropolis Arc 1. Love the choir in that. Let's start with the highs. And I don't, I like the default mic setting, so I'm not going to mess with it. So that's fine. Turn this down. Women's. Oops. Like. Next one is uh, sustains. Moving along, staccato. So that's pretty cool there. Just just works. You don't have to mess with it really that much. So like Mercado Long. Then is Mercado short. And finally, there's a 
glissando effects patch. So I don't know where, you, I mean, you can use that in like risers and stuff. Maybe, we'll see. Nice blue. So then we uh, do the same for mint. gonna put these at three Mercado long and finally gliss effects I also like to use the Sh Shretsov, uh Freya and Wotan samples. Let's start with the Legatos. Kind of the overlap here, which is kind of cool. So you can do harmonies, but you still have the nice. So you still have the nice transitions there. The Wotan tenors. I like this Kino Rin Say pattern as I. So, here's what we did. So here's the Wotan basses. So. So that's it for the choir. So we're set with that. So let me put this in a folder. All right, uh, choir. Also change the color of this to that blue that we liked here. We're gonna do some reverb, but before that, we're gonna create groups, uh, group tracks. So, I'm kind of new to Cubase, so bear with me, but to create group tracks, I think it's control G. Okay. So we're going to call this one strings or string group.
So if we go over to the mixer, here's all our strings, right? So we're going to select all the strings. And then... All right, you have to do shift option and then that sends all your selected tracks to the group. So now when we play See everything now comes through the group here. If you see this. Here. So from that point we're going to send to a reverb here. And I have a few options. We're going to try out a few different reverbs. We're going to create a new FX channel. So this is going to be the Valhalla Vintage Reverb. So that's one. I'm gonna add another one. Valhalla room. Valhalla room. And finally, I also like the Phoenix verb. And I'll show you that one. Well, this should be the same color as the strings, so make that this color. So let's load the reverb um, reverbs into these here. Okay, and I like I created my own patch here, and I'll just show that to you. Pete's nice hall. So it's the concert hall. From these modes. Pre delay of about 43 milliseconds. But I'm actually going to take that down to 30. Mix all the way up. The modulation I kept pretty low depth wise. High cut at 10, 440 hertz. So yeah, so there's that one. And then for this one, we're going to do the Valhalla Room. So yeah, here's the Valhalla Room. Mix, I uh, use the large hall preset, mix 200%. I changed the uh, milliseconds to 20 or even 30. Let's try 30 actually. Also, I lower the high cut down to around uh, like 4K. This is pretty good. I may go up to two and a half seconds. Everything else, I don't really touch any of that stuff. So, okay, so that's good. And finally, the Phoenix reverb and for this I like the medium hall pre delay I'm going to raise up a little to 30 herb time yeah I guess so then we're going to compare these reverbs on the strings here string group we're going to send to the reverb. So let's try, I want to try this Phoenix verb for a second. So let's go to a patch here. We'll listen to it on the shorts. That would make sense. So I don't use a lot of reverb. I just want to give it that. So let's see, we're going to send some to Yeah, it's a little too much, but so let's try like let's 
try like negative eight DB here. So now, my the question is: Do I want to send the shorts to the reverb? Maybe not, because we might want to keep it tighter. So, that's a little roomy for strings. Even if we cut this down. So here's what I'm going to do. The shorts are not going to have any reverb on it. So let's go back. We're going to have to split off the longs and the shorts before we go to the string group. Gonna create some new string shorts. String longs. Let, let's get all these in here. The brass, I'm probably gonna have reverb on the longs and the shorts because they're further back in the orchestra. So that's that's fine. So we're just splitting off the strings so that we get that definition with the shorts, especially for ostinato stuff and things like that. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. How do I do that? I guess shift. All right, so we go back to the mixer. So this reverb, oops, I'm gonna copy it and paste it here. Okay, so so now the shorts. Oh wait, so both these strings we have to send to the string group, and then also we have some stuff to do over here. So let's select all the shorts, and then right here, shift option. Okay, and then these string longs. Shift option, string longs. Then we go to here, and these have to go to string group. String group. And then the string group goes to the master, master bus. All right, so let's check this, make sure so these shorts are not going to the reverb. But let's make sure. Good, nice and tight. But the longs. going to the reverb. Alright, so this is too much here. Let me lower this. So that's what the Phoenix verb sounds like. Let's put another send in here. We're going to compare some reverbs for a second. Vintage verb. We're going to use it about the same.
So that has, hear the tail there? Has a nice tail. It's a little different than the Phoenix. Listen to the Phoenix again. Phoenix is a little more subtle. And even if we turn it up. It's nice too, but I think I prefer the vintage reverb. But let's put in the Valhalla room and see what we think of that. So same kind of settings here. Like eight. Now here's the Valhalla room. So I like that too. I think maybe we'll go with the Valhalla room. Let's listen to the hall again. So comment below, tell me which one you prefer. Very similar. There's the room, here's the vintage. Oh. So maybe we'll keep it on the hall now that I think about it. But I like that hall. I use that's what I usually use. But anyway, we have three options now that we can easily switch to. So let's continue with the routing here. I'm not going to put any reverb on the percussion because we want it to be f more forward sounding. And we already sort of tweaked all the room settings for our, the percussion, so so we're good to go with that. So this is going to be percussion group, perk group, and then so we select all the percussion tracks, percussion group, and there we go. So let's make sure this is coming through here. to the group, okay. Okay. So we're good with that. Let's create a new group. Brass. Brass group. I should call this group so we don't confuse it here. Maybe subgroup. Subgroup. So, routing stereo out, brass group. Okay. 
looks like everything. Actually, we have to add the reverb to the brass. So let's open up some longs here. Maybe I'll use the Valhalla room for the brass. I don't mind mixing and matching those because they're very similar. Okay, that's a tiny bit long on the decay. Let me check check that out for a second. So I'm going to bring this back down to where it was, which is like two point um, there. Oops. Also pre-delay down to 20. Okay, I like that. Choir. Choir group. So the color of choir is blue. To make sure I keep the colors coordinated. This blue. Go back to the mixer. So it also copied over the reverb, so that's good. Routing. Okay. Make sure this is going through. Okay, that's good. Nice, nice reverb tone there. Just check the should we're going through going through here. Okay. I'm actually going to change the color on these. So, trailer effects I don't want any reverb on. So, so the color of this. Let's take this off. Okay, so so splitting these into groups makes it a lot easier to mix down the line. So that's why we're taking the time to do this. Trailer effects. And let's make sure we take that. Okay, so the reverb's off. Good.
Okay. I'm not sure where those were. So, I don't really need effects with those. I mean, additional effects. And finally, I'm going to actually put these in a group after all. Piano. Piano group. This should say group too. Do we want reverb on the piano? I, th I think maybe to tie it together, even just a little might help. Like sending a little here, just to tie everything together. to that. Let's listen to the other pianos. fine for now because I already have that washy reverb on this I think I'm going to lessen that So we're ready to go. We got the template set up. We've got the strings, epic percussion, trailer effects, brass, longs and shorts, piano, and choir. And we just did all the subgrouping and reverb. So yeah, like I said at the beginning of the video, next week I'm gonna do three days where I compose a short piece in the morning, do a, a rough, like a piano sketch, and then after lunch, um, I'll score it for full orchestra. I'm gonna do some epic tracks. I'm gonna try to do three for my portfolio, I'm trying to do more of that now that I have some downtime between movies. So so yeah, it should be fun. You could, um, hopefully it won't be too stressful. <laughs> 
because I'm trying to learn Cubase as well. So, but yeah, any tips you guys have, you know, if you use Cubase that you could um, help me out with, that would be awesome too. So yeah, we're going to do that next week. And I think we're pretty well set up uh, with our, and I have my list of shortcuts and stuff. So yeah, three tracks in three days, see if we could do it. And uh, yeah, they're going to be short, like two minute trailery epic tracks. So should be fun. All right, we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye.